Well, let's just talk about first, what does privatization of water mean? Basically, privatization is uh, selling something for a profit. And uh, in the case of uh, our timber, uh, our timber, a natural resource, was sold uh, for a profit by um, private companies, meaning stockholder interests come before the public interest. In the case of water, which is a natural resource just like our trees are, um, it is, uh, if it's privatized, then stockholder interests and profits come before consumers. In the case of wood and, and tree products, uh, there are alternatives to building. If they wipe out all our trees, they can build things with other things, concrete, stone, etc. If you wipe out water or you pollute our water or it's, it's oversold, there is no substitute. Water is second only to air in terms of life, not only for humans, but all living things on this planet. So I, I, I would assume from that that you would agree with the statement that water is a human right? Absolutely. It's not a commodity to be mm -hmm. bought and sold for profit. Right. Okay. But there are attempts in Oregon now to privatize our water. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, the state of Oregon actually has some of the lowest percent of um, privatization of around the nation with the state of Washington having uh, one of the higher percentages and that is um, where utilities actually are run by private companies. Uh, we just have a few small utilities in Oregon that are run by private companies. Um, uh, I'm sorry, you say, when you say utilities, you're talking about water utilities because yes, uh, obviously you. our electricity mm -hmm. in Oregon is Certainly. mostly private as opposed right. to Washington, which is mostly public. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So okay. water is mostly public, but there are a few that are, um, if not owned uh, by public com private companies for profit, they're, at le they're operated. Uh, for instance, um, uh, let's see, uh, Wilsonville has just recently contracted with CH2M Hill to uh, run the Wilsonville uh, water plant. So uh, CH2M Hill is a private company. That means that they have to pay their stockholders money, called profit, mm -hmm. return on their investment before, that's what corporations do. They're number one obligated to owners and that comes before they pay money to um, or give benefits to customers. So that adds a burden to the whole rate schedule. And uh, with Wilsonville going to a private company, um, it's kind of one of the big utilities in the state that is uh, now being managed okay. privately. And I, I thought the Wilsonville uh, water plant was was it built by Veolia or was it managed by Veolia and now they're turning it over to CH2M Hill? Um, right. Um, the sewer is being operated by, excuse me, I'm reversing them. Thank you, David. Oh, okay. uh, I'm reversing them. Uh, right. The water system is Veolia. The sewer system okay. is CH2M Hill. Oh, okay. I, I think of sewer as, um, as the, the brother of our clean water system it because mm -hmm. it's all part of the big cycle. So thank you for correcting oh, okay. me. Yes, Wilsonville's um, uh, treatment plant uh, for water is Veolia, and this is about seven or eight years old because their uh, well system uh, started becoming contaminated and the, uh, the state said no more wells to be built or dug. Um, which meant no more development um, because of the increased contamination as water tables drop down, arsenic and those things come up mm -hmm. and increases the concentration. So they chose, rather than hooking into the city of Portland water from Bull Run, they chose to drink from the Willamette and that's when Viole was brought in. That sounds so disgusting. Well, it's not only their <laughs> water, but Dasani bottled water, mm -hmm. which is bottled by Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is one of the largest uh, rate payers for Wilsonville. And people who drink Dasani bottled water are drinking Willamette water. Oh, and so the Wilsonville plant supposedly cleans it uh, and mm -hmm. then sells it to Coca-Cola. Uh, who, who bottles it? Yes. Uh, I see. And sell oh, okay. it as Dasani. Mm -hmm. So, okay. 
Yes, yeah, so, so little by little, so, uh, things like that are creeping in. Um, those are the obvious privatization issues um, that come up where uh, water utility is uh, uh, quite often designed and built by a private company because it can't expect um, a municipality like even like Portland, a large one, to have that expertise on, on staff. Um, but to manage um, the operation, uh, usually it is uh, public um, employees. Mm -hmm. And in these cases, uh, we have Gresham, we have Vancouver across the river, we have Wilsonville, both their drinking and their sewer now gone to private uh, companies. So they're mm -hmm. scooping profit off uh -huh. the top. Oh, okay. So that's one obvious way of mm -hmm. privatization. Another privatization issue that people don't think about is bottled water. And then we've already talked a little bit about Dasani, but um, very big issue coming up in the mm -hmm. gorge, or has been around for a couple of years, but the big decision will be coming in the next year. Bottled water is basically privatization of water. It is taking what we own, the, 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 the uh, state of Oregon citizens own the water. The infrastructure is what we pay for to deliver the water to us, but we own that water, mm -hmm. and it is delved or it is divvied up by water rights that the state manages. But um, as soon as someone comes in, like Nestle, or like Coca-Cola, or like Walmart, Walmart has a little artesian well out near Cove, Oregon. Oh, really? And they, oh. they hmm. bottle that water. So that's taking our water that mm -hmm. belongs to the state of Oregon citizens, putting it in bottles, and shipping it who knows where. Probably West Coast, mm -hmm. but might be elsewhere. And for a huge amount of profit, huge amount, they get that water for like two tenths excuse me, two one hundredths of a cent per gallon, and they turn around and sell it for approximately eight dollars a gallon. Yeah, so a, a little a little bottle goes for a buck? Exactly. Right, okay. Right. And that's probably a quarter of a gallon, less than a quarter of a gallon, maybe an eighth of a gallon. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay. All right. So, so that's, that's where it comes up. And so people, and of course, you know, Hades, earthquake, uh, Fukushima, tsunami, those kinds of disasters, of course, bottled water is needed. So we're not saying no bottled water. Mm -hmm. What we're saying is the more we sell people bottled water and, and indicate through marketing that it is better for us, then the less people are inclined to pay public rates to keep the public source mm -hmm. clean and good working order, good customer service at a low price. The more you privatize or buy something outside of the public system, the public system is going to fall apart. Right, yeah, it just deteriorates. There's no support for it. Right. Yeah, and, and as people identify something as belonging in the private sector, then the support for having public diminishes. Correct. Right, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about what Nestle is, is doing in, in Oregon. Okay. And Cascade Locks. Cascade Locks um, has just uh, on its, um, the, the edge of the little city, the city town, has less than a thousand people there. There is a little creek, um, Herman Creek. And um, it is a, a spring water that comes out of the side of the mountain. It's not part of the Bull Run um, system, but it is uh, on the side of uh, Mount Hood. And that water is captured for uh, a, fish, a fish hatchery up there. So mm -hmm. the, the state uses it um, to raise uh, uh, fingerlings. Well, Nestle's researchers, lawyers, who knows, whatever, discovered this little spring. Mm -hmm. And they need a source in the Northwest uh, to have for their spring water so they can sell it. Uh, as Arrowhead, I believe, um, they have something like 60 different brands, so who knows? It uh, could be, uh, they could call it Calistoga water, you know, mm -hmm. the marketing. Uh, five other, one, two, three, four other small towns in the Northwest have turned them down. But Cascade Locks is uh, a timber town that never recovered when um, their mill, their nearby mill was shut down. And um, they have very high unemployment. 
They have some of the highest in Oregon, which is some of the highest in the nation, which means some of the highest in the nation in Cascade Locks. And this large corporation came along and said, hey, we'll give you 49 jobs. Just sell us your spring water. Mm -hmm. Well, the state's using it for the fingerlings. So the lawyers got together and figured out how to trade municipal groundwater for this spring water do a water right exchange and then the city of Cascade Locks could sell it to to Nestle and that would imp uh, increase their their revenues for the city got 250,000 a year 49 jobs never mind that it's forklift drivers and and so forth at uh, probably minimum wage and so uh, right now the state of Oregon, uh, the Water Resource Department is trying to decide whether to allow this exchange. Mm -hmm. There have been over 4,000 letters from uh, Oregonians uh, urging the state not to approve this, not to approve it. Mm -hmm. Cascade Locks for the most part support it. It's very hard to come in with a noble idea of water should be for everybody if you don't have food on your table and you mm -hmm. haven't had a paycheck mm -hmm. for years, mm -hmm. it's very hard. But, yeah. but we're trying to hold the light of the long range idea that water should be for all, mm -hmm. should not be bottled and sold for someone who can afford a dollar for that bottle. Oh, right, yeah. And uh, I, I know when this proposal originally was made that most of the elected officials in Cascade Lock were uh, supportive of, the, of mm -hmm. the idea, but they ha there was an election, and I understand that some of those folks left yes, or, or were voted I off did. the council. And so, uh, how how is that breaking down now in terms of the, the, the new ones support? are uh, f uh, somewhat neutral, but there, we don't have anybody who is speaking against it. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. a tough decision for them. Okay. I I appreciate that they're between a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and is there any guarantee that these forty nine jobs? would actually go to residents in Cascade Locks? No, it's open, um, in, uh, not enrollment, but uh, anybody from nearby Hood River or even Portland could apply for these jobs. Okay, all right, so, so I, I would assume that the residents there are assuming that they're going to get hired, but that's not necessarily the case. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm.